Universal Life. Around the clock, around the world. Hike is news. Always watching, because you are always watching. I know I am not the only one wondering what the Augmented Rights Coalition hopes to achieve following news of yesterday's devastating attack in Prague. So let's hear from Dr. Talis Rucker, ARC's charmingly eloquent leader himself. What the non-augmented peoples of the world have failed to grasp is the incident was a tragedy for all. But it wasn't all of humankind who went crazy, Dr. Rucker. The loss of life on both sides was considerable, but instead of healing and dialogue, fear of the augmented has turned to hatred. Surely you cannot claim to be mistreated by governments when they have spent taxpayer money to build special living quarters for you and your kind. But when legislation forces augmented people out of their homes and into sequestered environments, there's no reason involved. Only fear and expedience. And that is why I moved to the Utelec complex. I thought you were forced to leave your native Germany. Were there not allegations that you... Those accusations were false. When I arrived in Prague... There was a terrorist bombing at a local church. But, but Ark had nothing to do with that. We are... A non-violent organization. Yes, yes, you said that. That was six months ago. Earlier today, the Ruzika train station fell victim to a bombing, the third to hit Prague in recent months. Is this really the face of a pacifist? Join the discussion online and let us know what you think. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from PICUS. PICUS News, the global leader in fair, unbiased, and impartial reporting. And now for a close look at the events making headlines around the world. Here are our top stories. And now for a close look at events making headlines around the world. The impact of the AUG incident is still being felt two years after the fact. The fear, the hatred, the violence. In the northwestern United States, a group of non-augmented citizens armed with assault rifles have begun patrolling the streets of Lewistown, Montana. They claim the U.S. government is not doing enough to protect them from augmented crazies. In China, meanwhile, a group of protesters demanding freedom and basic human rights for all, regardless of augmented status, have been imprisoned by the Chinese government. In apparent retribution for that act, vigilante hackers tied to the Juggernaut Collective have crashed the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. Yes, folks, these are troubled times indeed. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from PICUS. The Santo Group. Construction, arcology, quality, excellence. Santo, restoring the past and building the future. No doubt many viewers were horrified by that story I brought to you last week, in which a suicide gunman ruthlessly attacked a small augmented community near Dar es Salaam. Today, I'm here to bring you a glimmer of hope. European-based construction giant, the Santo Group, has successfully convinced the Tanzanian government to become a signatory of its Safe Harbor Initiative. Designed to promote the creation of safe and secure housing complexes where oppressed groups can live and work, free from persecution, this international civil engineering and action plan is the brainchild of Santo CEO, Nathaniel Brown. Its flagship project, a glittering engineered city named Rabia is slated to be publicly unveiled at one of Brown's upcoming safe harbor conventions. I, for one, cannot wait to learn more. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from PICUS. Tradition, precision, refinement, Stanek watches. It's about time. In yet another augmented terror attack, 251 passengers aboard Sista Airlines Flight 451 were killed when an augmented passenger broke into the plane's cockpit and ruthlessly butchered its flight crew. Details recovered from the black box recorder suggest that the man may have been suffering flashbacks to the AUG incident, that horrible day two years ago when augmented people all over the world flew into a psychotic killing spree causing the greatest loss of life in recent history. I cannot speak for you folks, but terrifying memories of that day still haunt me. 
It will certainly be a while before any of us forget it. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Keeping you alive and clearing a way to your future. Proven. Safe. Versal life. Around the clock, around the world. Around the clock, around the world. Pikus News. Always watching, because you are always watching. Turning now to Prague, a city still reeling in the wake of a devastating terror attack. Dozens were killed and hundreds more injured yesterday when bombs exploded inside Rizika train station. I do not need to remind you folks that this is the third such attack to strike Prague in six months. All of them occurring after Dr. Talis Rucker, leader of the Augmented Rights Coalition, took up residence in the neighboring Udalek complex. Dr. Rucker claims his organization is peaceful and merely seeks to ensure the rights of the Augmented in a world that has turned against them. But with the United Nations set to debate the Human Restoration Act in a matter of weeks, could the good doctor be changing his tune? Your guess is as good as mine. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Picus News, the global leader in fair, unbiased, and impartial reporting. And now for a close look at the events making headlines around the world. Here are our top stories. Is freedom of the press a threat to our freedom? In the hands of irresponsible journalists, it can be. Underground websites and radio stations continue to praise the Juggernaut Collective, an elusive group of vigilante hackers, for exposing big money corruption. What these journalists overlook, however, is the damage these hackers leave in their wake. Last year, the Collective shut down London's traffic grid, causing gridlock for hours and preventing life-saving medical transports from getting through. In Chile, they committed massive voter fraud when they rigged the electronic voting system and elected a 12-year-old boy as president. In Russia, hacked combat drones attacked St. Petersburg. And in the U.S., millions of workers lost their jobs when the collective leaked classified corporate documents, causing several Fortune 500 companies to go bankrupt. Between you and me, folks, the Collective is one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in the world, despite whatever praises the underground media wants to sing. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Ariel is constantly bringing you the best and latest technology. Our portable data solutions have massive storage capacities, flexible screens, and over 1,000 other unique and patented features. Ariel, up in the stratosphere. Back to New York, and a more in-depth look at UN Security Council Resolution 3507, also known as the Human Restoration Act. This legislation, if passed, calls for the removal and downgrading of all overly powerful, unlicensed augmentations. Individuals who fail to comply will be arrested and relocated to designated AUG-only locations. Safety is the primary concern, especially in the wake of the AUG incident, where millions of people lost their lives due to malfunctioning augmentations. Opponents of the legislation have been protesting all over the world, and many of the protests have turned violent. This escalation in the violence and rhetoric has only widened the gap and polarized the dialogue on both sides of the issue. We will be watching the UN closely for any break in the story. This is Eliza Kazan. Reporting to you, live, from Picus. They may have batteries, but we got this. Ashanti Energy Drinks, for all you need to get through the day. Ashanti. Join us. In yet another augmented terror attack, 251 passengers aboard Sista Airlines Flight 451 were killed when an augmented passenger broke into the plane's cockpit and ruthlessly butchered its flight crew. Details recovered from the black box recorder suggest that the man may have been suffering flashbacks to the AUG incident, that horrible day two years ago when augmented people all over the world flew into a psychotic killing spree, causing the greatest loss of life in recent history. I cannot speak for you folks, but terrifying memories of that day still haunt me. It will certainly be a while before any of us forget it. This is Eliza Kassan, 
Reporting to you live from Picus. Exclusivity, anonymity, security. These are the greatest concerns of the digital age. And we at Palisade Property Bank have made addressing those concerns priority one. Information archived within the walls of Palisade Property Bank is beyond the legal jurisdiction of any government. Assured anonymity. Palisade Bank Corporation is now and forever will be the best secure corporate archiving company in the world. Around the clock, around the world. Around the clock, around the world. Pikus News, always watching, because you are always watching. As sad as I feel to report this, no one has yet claimed responsibility for that shocking series of explosions that ripped through Ruzika train station yesterday morning, prematurely ending the lives of dozens of innocent travelers. Earlier this evening, Dr. Talis Rucker did post a letter from his home inside the neighboring Udalek complex, condemning the attack and urging Czech authorities to investigate, just as he has every time bombs have gone off in Prague. Sources close to the investigation tell me that most augmented citizens inside the Udalek complex are complying peacefully with police requests. But Rucker himself still refuses to allow anyone but ARC members into his borough. Another example of peaceful protests, no doubt. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Picus News. The global leader in fair, unbiased, and impartial reporting. And now for a close look at the events making headlines around the world. Here are our top stories. Turning now to business news. Sources inside the Santo Group let slip this morning that billionaire CEO Nathaniel Brown is once again touring Asia, drumming up investment interest in Rabia. Brown has been positioning the ambitiously innovative city of the future as a global refuge, an AUG-only paradise built for and by the augmented. No word yet on how much capital he needs, but having caught a sneak peek at Rabia's architectural designs, I can honestly tell you this. When completed, every augmented person in the world will be crossing the desert, in this case, the Omani Desert, to live there. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. My friends, this most recent act of senseless violence has been laid at our feet. At the feet of all augmented, not simply Ark. And I fear the repercussions will test our resolve, the strength of our convictions. We have been cast as the villain once again. Despite our denials, our protestations, despite our dedication to the peaceful advancement of our cause, despite the fact that some of our own were killed in the attack at Ruzika Station, but fear has blinded our accusers. And although I know that many of you are fearful in the wake of such violence, I urge you not to become as blind. You know as well as I that they will come here into your homes to intimidate, to accuse, perhaps worse. And some of you will be tempted to strike out, strike back. Please, I urge you to refrain. More violence will only escalate the situation. It will only serve to strengthen their justification. I know it is a lot to ask, to lay down in front of our oppressors, but only in this way will the augmented be accepted into the world again. I speak to all of you, not as the leader of Ark, but as your neighbor, your friend. Our only solace may be the knowledge, the certainty, that we are right. The Santo Group. Construction. Arcology. Quality. 
excellence. Santo, restoring the past and building the future. Now to the moon, where the planned expansion of Moon Base Omega has once again been placed on hold. Several financial backers were forced to pull out this week due to their involvement in an ongoing securities fraud investigation. Sources tell me that plans are still in the works for a small colony near Clavius, but with the current state of the economy, that seems more like a dream now than a reality. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Tradition. Precision. Refinement. Stanek watches. It's about time. Back to New York, and a more in-depth look at UN Security Council Resolution 3507, also known as the Human Restoration Act. This legislation, if passed, calls for the removal and downgrading of all overly powerful, unlicensed augmentations. Individuals who fail to comply will be arrested and relocated to designated AUG-only locations. Safety is the primary concern, especially in the wake of the AUG incident, where millions of people lost their lives due to malfunctioning augmentations. Opponents of the legislation have been protesting all over the world, and many of the protests have turned violent. This escalation in the violence and rhetoric has only widened the gap and polarized the dialogue on both sides of the issue. We will be watching the UN closely for any break in the story. This is Eliza Kazan, reporting to you live from Picus. Keeping you alive and clearing a way to your future. Proven. Safe. Versa life. My friends, this most recent act of senseless violence has been laid at our feet. At the feet of all augmented. Not simply, Ark. And I fear the repercussions will test our resolve, the strength of our convictions. We have been cast as the villain once again. Despite our denials, our protestations, despite our dedication to the peaceful advancement of our cause, despite the fact that some of our own were killed in the attack at Ruzika Station, but fear has blinded our accusers. And although I know that many of you are fearful in the wake of such violence, I urge you not to become as blind. You know as well as I that they will come here into your homes to intimidate, to accuse, perhaps worse. And some of you will be tempted to strike out, strike back. Please, I urge you to refrain. More violence will only escalate the situation. It will only serve to strengthen their justification. I know it is a lot to ask, to lay down in front of our oppressors. But only in this way will the augmented be accepted into the world again. I speak to all of you, not as the leader of Ark, but as your neighbor, your friend. Our only solace may be the knowledge, the certainty that we are right. Around the clock, around the world. Around the clock, around the world. Pikus News, always watching, because you are always watching. In part one of our two-part look at the Human Restoration Act, I am joined by the head of the Department of Sociology at Harvard, Dr. Stansfield Christensen. It is a pleasure to speak with you, Doctor. Tell me. What do you feel the Human Restoration Act will achieve if it is passed? <laughs> when? Ah, when it is passed. And it's a pleasure to speak with you too, Eliza. Listen, I know opponents are saying the Human Restoration Act is a step backwards, a devastating blow against basic human rights. 
But these social justice warriors failed to see the bigger picture. The AUG incident threw everything off the rails. Since then, the rift between augmented and naturals has gotten so wide, so deep, it's become impossible to cross. We need a timeout, a temporary separation of the classes, so we can clear the air and reevaluate how we can coexist peacefully. So the sentiment that it is being enacted as a form of subjugation is false then, Doctor? Unequivocally false. The goal of the legislation is to ensure that they are as safe from us as we are from them. I am not augmented, but I have many friends who are. And most of them are afraid to walk outside of their homes right now, because if they do, the level of hatred and suspicion aimed at them, it's horrifying. They want to feel safe again, and the Human Restoration Act can give them that. Well, there you have it, folks. It sounds like UN Resolution 3507 may be the solution the world is looking for. Thank you, Dr. Christensen, for your honest and insightful perspective. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from PICUS. PICUS News, the global leader in fair, unbiased, and impartial reporting. And now for a close look at the events making headlines around the world. Here are our top stories. Investors around the world today rejoiced at a decision by the Czech Republic to approve expansion plans for the Palisade Bank Corporation. Located in Prague, the bank's iconic blade facilities hold the largest and most secure data archiving vaults in the world. Cutting-edge security measures have protected the sensitive secrets of megacorporations and influential individuals since privacy laws first passed. Sources close to the bank tell me that no hacker has ever come close to breaching the Blade's defenses, despite an almost astronomical number of attempts. Between you and me, folks, I think they are just wasting their time. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from PICUS. Ariel is constantly bringing you the best and latest technology. Our portable data solutions have massive storage capacities flexible screens, and over 1,000 other unique and patented features. Ariel, up in the stratosphere. Deadly infectious diseases are at the center of some disturbing health news right now. The most significant of them, in terms of human cases and death toll, is an antibiotic-resistant strain of tuberculosis that has been spreading quickly through the Indian subcontinent. World health officials are scrambling to contain the outbreak, even as work begins in San Francisco at pharmaceutical giant Versalife's cutting-edge Rocaseca Beach facility to find a more aggressive cure. Sources inside the R&D campus tell me, however, that this most recent strain mutates so quickly, new vaccines become obsolete before they can even reach infected areas. So experts are working day and night, not only on aggressive treatments, but on new cures and methodologies that will prevent deadly outbreaks from occurring at all. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from PICUS. They may have batteries, but we got this. Ashanti Energy Drinks, for all you need to get through the day. Ashanti, join us. Is freedom of the press a threat to our freedom? In the hands of irresponsible journalists, it can be. Underground websites and radio stations continue to praise the Juggernaut Collective, an elusive group of vigilante hackers, for exposing big money corruption. What these journalists overlook, however, is the damage these hackers leave in their wake. Last year, the Collective shut down London's traffic grid, causing gridlock for hours and preventing life-saving medical transports from getting through. In Chile, they committed massive voter fraud when they rigged the electronic voting system and elected a 12-year-old boy as president. In Russia, hacked combat drones attacked St. Petersburg. And in the U.S., millions of workers lost their jobs when the collective leaked classified corporate documents, causing several Fortune 500 companies to go bankrupt. Between you and me, folks, the collective is one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in the world, despite whatever praises the underground media wants to sing. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from PICUS. Exclusivity. 
anonymity, security. These are the greatest concerns of the digital age, and we at Palisade Property Bank have made addressing those concerns priority one. Information archived within the walls of Palisade Property Bank is beyond the legal jurisdiction of any government. Assured anonymity. Palisade Bank Corporation is now and forever will be the best secure corporate archiving company in the world. Around the clock, around the world. Versa life. Around the clock, around the world. Pike is news. Always watching, because you are always watching. In part two of our look at the Human Restoration Act, I am joined by Planet Music award-winning artist, Niashia Akeem, who has recently launched a new partnership with Artists Against Violence to oppose the act. Ms. Akeem, it is a pleasure to speak with you today. Hello, Eliza. Thank you for having me on your program. Let me begin by stating that the Human Restoration Act is nothing more than legalized slavery. My hope is that in working with artists against violence, we can put enough pressure on governments to stop this. Slavery is a very strong word, Ms. Akeem. When I spoke with head of the Department of Sociology at Harvard, Dr. Stansfield Christensen, he described the goal of the Human Restoration Act as a time out between augmented and naturals. A temporary separation of the classes to clear the air and reevaluate how we can coexist. He said, Mandatory removal of non compliant augmentations, corralling those who resist into segregated districts? A time out, Miss Kassan, is when you make a child stand in the corner of the room for 10 minutes. This is domination. Not everyone chose to be augmented. We were victims here, too. But that does not make for good news, does it? But, Miss Akeem, News outlets are simply reporting on the current situation. And you have to agree that right now, the world consists of little more than terror, conflict, and chaos. No, 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 that is completely wrong. You're wrong. There is still much beauty in the world. Love, compassion, it is still here, if you want to see it. You can choose to only show my shoe, which is very ugly, but that is only a small part of me. News outlets only care about a small part. I'm sorry, Miss Kassan, but you can't trust the news outlets if you want to understand the world. That is all the time we have, folks. Thank you for your input today, Miss Akeem. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from PICUS. PICUS News, the global leader in fair, unbiased, and impartial reporting. And now for a close look at the events making headlines around the world. Here are our top stories. Time now for the first in a new series focusing on innovation. This week's episode, Rabia, City of the Future. According to its creators, Rabia is a new way of living, a utopic beacon of light that is at the heart of the Santo Group's Safe Harbor Initiative. The city, the first of its kind in the world, will be a haven for augmented people, a stable and self-sufficient hub of creativity and innovation based on the principles of arcology, the blending of architecture and ecology. The planning and construction of the city is unique. It was literally printed, one layer at a time, and most of the design and layout of the city was done procedurally, by computer algorithm. For me, the absolute key is a strong foundation, not what you build over it. With the augmented, we're talking about a foundation of basic humanity. That can't be denied. <laughs> Some people have called this project an artificial utopia, but to that I say you can't have artificiality without art. Tune in next week for our second episode in this series, where we will look at the technology of sustainability that the Santo Group claims to have perfected in Rabia. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. The Santo Group. Construction. Arcology, quality, excellence. Santo, restoring the past and building the future. Now moving over to technology. Since the U.S. Air Force launched SpaceNet two years ago, the costly planetary defense system designed to clean up space junk has achieved nothing. Not one blast, not one asteroid or meteor has been deflected. It makes you wonder, folks, 
Where did the estimated 12 trillion dollars spent on the system go? No one seems to have an answer. The Air Force also fended off questions from critics who are concerned that the defense system could target the Earth as well as space. What would happen, detractors asked, if Spacenet were hacked by cyber terrorists, like Janus and his juggernaut collective? The Air Force claims the system is secure and the likelihood of it being hacked slight. I guess only time will tell. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Tradition. Precision. Refinement. Stanek watches. It's about time. Is freedom of the press a threat to our freedom? In the hands of irresponsible journalists, it can be. Underground websites and radio stations continue to praise the Juggernaut Collective, an elusive group of vigilante hackers, for exposing big money corruption. What these journalists overlook, however, is the damage these hackers leave in their wake. Last year, the Collective shut down London's traffic grid, causing gridlock for hours and preventing life-saving medical transports from getting through. In Chile, they committed massive voter fraud when they rigged the electronic voting system and elected a 12-year-old boy as president. In Russia, hacked combat drones attacked St. Petersburg. And in the U.S., millions of workers lost their jobs when the Collective leaked classified corporate documents, causing several Fortune 500 companies to go bankrupt. Between you and me, folks, the Collective is one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in the world, despite whatever praises the underground media wants to sing. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Keeping you alive and clearing a way to your future. Proven. Safe. Versa life. Around the clock, around the world. Around the clock, around the world. Picus News. Always watching, because you are always watching. Now back to our top story. State police in Prague, working under direct instructions from the Army of the Czech Republic, have imposed a state of martial law throughout their city. This, after riots in the Santo Group's Udelec complex threatened to spill over into the capital streets. Allegedly perpetrated by masses of Augmented in reaction to the sudden, unexpected death of Talis Rucker. The riots have many people fearing the worst. That a repeat of the Aug incident may be at hand. Many citizens are now demanding that the United Nations Security Council expedite their decision on Resolution 3507, the Human Restoration Act. If passed, it will mandate the worldwide removal or downgrading of augmentations, making mechanically augmented people safe again. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Picus News, the global leader in fair, unbiased, and impartial reporting. And now for a close look at the events making headlines around the world. Here are our top stories. Santo CEO Nathaniel Brown took time away from his convention circuit to speak with me about recent upheavals in Prague. Here is what the billionaire business mogul had to say. Events inside the Utelec complex have only strengthened our resolve and our belief in the absolute necessity to create safe and secure environments for augmented citizens. No one needs to imagine what might have happened if state police had not moved swiftly to prevent the riots from spilling into Prague. Indeed. None of us are likely to forget the last time augmented people allowed their emotions to get the best of them. So are you a supporter, then, of United Nations Resolution 3507? Do you believe the controversial Human Restoration Act should pass? Eliza, if members of the UN Security Council could see what we at the Santo Group are building in Rabia, if they were willing to put their support behind me and the Safe Harbor Initiative, well, I wonder if they'd need to debate the act at all. To hear more of my exclusive interview with Brown, log on to picusweb.com. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. 
Ariel is constantly bringing you the best and latest technology. Our portable data solutions have massive storage capacities, flexible screens, and over 1,000 other unique and patented features. Ariel, up in the stratosphere. This report just in. Law enforcement officials in Prague have tracked down and captured the bomb maker whose deadly explosive devices claimed the lives of dozens of innocent travelers earlier this week. The woman, an ex-army demolition specialist named Alison Stanek, appears to be a religious fanatic and leader of the tech cult group Church of the Machine God. Police arrested her and several of her followers inside the cult's headquarters, following an extensive investigation. If you ask me, folks, that is some very good news indeed. They may have batteries, but we got this. Ashanti Energy Drinks, for all you need to get through the day. Ashanti, join us. And now for a close look at events making headlines around the world. The impact of the AUG incident is still being felt two years after the fact. The fear, the hatred, the violence. In the northwestern United States, a group of non-augmented citizens, armed with assault rifles, have begun patrolling the streets of Lewistown, Montana. They claim the U.S. government is not doing enough to protect them from augmented crazies. In China, meanwhile, a group of protesters demanding freedom and basic human rights for all, regardless of augmented status, have been imprisoned by the Chinese government. In apparent retribution for that act, Vigilante hackers tied to the Juggernaut Collective have crashed the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. Yes, folks, these are troubled times indeed. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Exclusivity, anonymity, security. These are the greatest concerns of the digital age, and we at Palisade Property Bank have made addressing those concerns priority one. Information archived within the walls of Palisade Property Bank is beyond the legal jurisdiction of any government. Assured anonymity. Palisade Bank Corporation is now, and forever will be, the best secure corporate archiving company in the world. Around the clock, around the world. Versa Life. Around the clock, around the world. Hypers News. Always watching, because you are always watching. All eyes are on London tonight, as last-minute preparations get underway for the most anticipated safe harbor convention yet. Influential people from across the globe are even now gathering inside Apex Center, a magnificent multi-purpose business and residential complex situated near the London Sink. Most are coming to watch billionaire business mogul Nathaniel Brown as he unveils Rabia to its investors for the very first time. I, for one, cannot wait to see more pictures of Rabia. So stay tuned to Picus News for full coverage of the convention as it unfolds. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Picus News, the global leader in fair, unbiased, and impartial reporting. And now for a close look at the events making headlines around the world. Here are our top stories. This week in Hawaii, an international summit on seismology took place. A really hot topic was the so-called Ring of Fire, where the Pacific and Arctic plates meet. There is, apparently, an increase in the tectonic activity from Alaska all the way down to Chile. Dr. Christian Melnick, renowned seismologist, had this to say. It's a complex problem. There is currently an increase in the seismic pressure between the Pacific and North American plates. If a subducting plate builds up enough energy and causes an uplift on the ocean floor, this massive shift in the water column would cause a tsunami the likes of which the world has not seen since the Paleolithic era. Disturbing news indeed. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. The Santo Group. Construction. Arcology, quality, excellence. Santo, restoring the past and building the future. 
Back to New York, and a more in-depth look at UN Security Council Resolution 3507, also known as the Human Restoration Act. This legislation, if passed, calls for the removal and downgrading of all overly powerful, unlicensed augmentations. Individuals who fail to comply will be arrested and relocated to designated AUG-only locations. Safety is the primary concern, especially in the wake of the AUG incident, where millions of people lost their lives due to malfunctioning augmentations. Opponents of the legislation have been protesting all over the world, and many of the protests have turned violent. This escalation in the violence and rhetoric has only widened the gap and polarized the dialogue on both sides of the issue. We will be watching the UN closely for any break in the story. This is Eliza Kazan, reporting to you, live, from Picus. Ariel is constantly bringing you the best and latest technology. Our portable data solutions have massive storage capacities, flexible screens, and over 1,000 other unique and patented features. Ariel, up in the stratosphere. Time now for the first in a new series focusing on innovation. This week's episode, Rabia, City of the Future. According to its creators, Rabia is a new way of living. A utopic beacon of light that is at the heart of the Santo Group's Safe Harbor Initiative. The city, the first of its kind in the world, will be a haven for augmented people. A stable and self-sufficient hub of creativity and innovation, based on the principles of arcology. The blending of architecture and ecology. The planning and construction of the city is unique. It was literally printed, one layer at a time, and most of the design and layout of the city was done procedurally, by computer algorithm. For me, the absolute key is a strong foundation, not what you build over it. With the augmented, we're talking about a foundation of basic humanity. That can't be denied. <laughs> Some people have called this project an artificial utopia, but to that I say you can't have artificiality without art. Tune in next week for our second episode in this series, where we will look at the technology of sustainability that the Santo Group claims to have perfected in Rabia. This is Eliza Kassan, reporting to you live from Picus. Keeping you alive and clearing a way to your future. Proven. Safe. Versa life. Around the clock, around the world.